Now we're going to go with the last example, which is how Spring Boot integrates with Kafka. Firstly, we have to understand that Kafka isn't the same as Cassandra or a database. Kafka is an eventing technology, which is also most similar to messaging, but it is not the same thing. So when we're talking about Kafka, think of it in terms of publish and subscribe, still the messaging type terminology, but when I publish a message to a topic, anybody who subscribes to that topic is gonna get a copy of that message. So it's more similar to a broadcast. What makes it traditionally different than a messaging system is that event, once it goes on to Kafka, is stored theoretically for any amount of time, an hour, a day, a week, years. And so there's a persistence built into the messaging bus. And that's what makes it fundamentally different and allows us to get into event-driven architectures. To demonstrate how this worked, I used a post mapping to create another slash publish endpoint. It is going to take three required parameters, A, B, and C. These could be anything. I just wanted to have an event have more than one field. Also consider, again, comparing Kafka to a database. We talk about an event. An event is really some sort of identifier followed by any data. It could be anything. It's a name value pair type system. We typically, though, are going to be storing JSON payloads in Kafka so we can easily pull them out and translate them into Java objects or return results from REST services. So what I've done is I've set up a new service with a publish event that is actually generating my payload, which is just an ID followed by these three fields. It is giving it a randomly generated ID and then setting the values for A, B, and C, and then providing that payload to my producer, in this case, my payload producer. This class is actually leveraging the Spring Kafka template, which I'm using to send that message, keying it by its ID to a specific topic, in this case, the topic provided in the configuration as JSON. So if I were to look at the raw content of the Kafka log, I would see an ID followed by a minimized JSON representation of this data input. To see this in action, we're gonna to go to the slash publish endpoint, try it out, give it some values like one, two, and three, hit execute, and what happens is that it takes this message and submits it to Kafka. Part of something that's built into Kafka that we haven't gotten to yet is that it consists of partitions. The topic is broken into individual partitions. In this case, I made 10 partitions. And the default strategy is round robin, meaning that when I take an event and I say, go put it on a topic, it is going to randomly pick one of those 10 partitions. And this is so that it can really load balance between those different partitions. Consider that this is also the level at which we're limited by concurrent application behavior. So when I connect the consumer to that topic, and there's only one consumer, it's actually gonna to connect to all 10 partitions. And so any event I publish is always gonna to go to the same consumer. The power in the distribution is if I were to break it up into, let's say, still 10 topics, but I have five applications. What would happen is that those different partitions would be split between those five different applications. And so every application would have two different partitions. So every time I generate an event, there's a potential for that event to go to be processed by one of these five different applications. And that's how we selectively do load balancing for data at a really large level. When we look at how this works in terms of consumption, what I've done is I've created a RESTful endpoint, noting this typically isn't how you'd be pulling data out of Kafka, just to demonstrate how an event listener works. So I declare a git slash events that returns a list of payloads, and you see that it's calling the sum listener class .git payloads. So what I did is I created a standard spring service as annotated by service, but what I've done is I've used the Kafka listener annotation to say that this method right here, anytime the application's running and it gets an event, it's gonna call this method, it's gonna pick up the payload, convert it into a my payload event, and then actually keep track of it in the application's memory using this payloads list. So this means that I'm only able to see events that happen while the application's running. And I just did this to be able to demonstrate easily it pulling different messages off the, off the topic. Also noting that if messages are put on a Kafka topic and those messages don't get consumed, the next time this application starts up, it'll just go ahead and consume those messages, picking up where it left off.
To see this work, we're going to go to the slash events endpoint and execute it. And what we're going to see is that you can see it's the event we generated with 1, 2, 3. And we can again test this by saying 4, 5, and 6. And now when I run get me all the events, we can see that the application is captured now with second event, this one with the values of 4, 5, and 6.